We can begin. Dear colleagues, hello everybody, welcome um, at this event, uh, at the round table uh, on the transformation of the culture of the civil service. I am Vasily Babic, I am the head of the Department of International Relations, uh, the resuscitation uh, package of reforms uh, coalition. and. Uh, I also represent uh, the Professional uh, Government uh, Association. Um, and uh, jointly with uh, our colleagues uh, who are experts in the stage today, we'll be doing a very important thing, working on the proposals, recommendations to the concept of uh, the culture of civil service. And I would like to say, uh, that we are grateful to the National Agency uh, of Civil Service of Ukraine, the Secretariat of the Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine, the Office of Reforms of the Cabinet of Ministers of Ukraine, the SIDS project, the Association of uh, Professional Government, um, as well as the Ukrainian Crisis Media Center for uh, convening us all together today. Um, and I would like to give the um, floor to Alexander Starodupso for a welcome speech, who is the uh, uh, head of uh, the National Agency of Civil Service of Ukraine. Alexander, uh, thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming. Thank you for caring about this uh, topic. Um, Guests who assist us with all of these complicated issues. Um, we all realize that something must be changed at the civil service. Something went wrong. What exactly went wrong? It's a question. I mean, I understand it's a welcome speech. No one was expecting a question. But let's start to change the formats. Something must be changed. What? Hooray. Thank you, Artem. Thank you, Artem. Well, wake up. But for the last year, uh, as I got back from Stanford, uh, 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 every, everyone got bored from my presentations about Prozoro and uh, Stanford uh, and what uh, the Prozoro uh, team was doing to achieve some results. And uh, I was trying to summarize to say that this is about cultural transformations of what the Prozoro team was doing. All these small things, small changes, uh, starting from uh, opening the door of your office and everyone starts to use uh, uh, do instead of Z, you know, if we use the German. Uh, um, and trying to change the senses, trying to change the meanings, you know. Um, so if we want to combine everything to do the, you know, the, this long list of small things, this is about cultural transformation. And the only problem is that there is no uh, sustainable uh, benchmark. Uh, you just do things mathematically. You do this, then you do that, then you do that. And then, and then you're happy. Everything works. But I guess that now the Ministry of Economy team uh, from their departments can say that it's, it, it's an interactive process. You try to do things with you know, uh, trial and error uh, methodology. Something works in this department, something uh, doesn't work in another department, and you do things carefully, like physicians, they try not to give pain to you. They move forward. So we have to sense this model somehow. How do we sense it? And what do we do with the transformation culture uh, at the Ukrainian civil service, is the question. I have started, uh, I've launched this narrative, I wonder if you will support it or not. Uh, in a lot of communities, in a lot of business communities, NGO communities, student communities, I um, tell that from my perspective, the long-term war, our war with our eastern uh, uh, terrible friends is about the management of the civil service. The management of the civil service um, has been inherited from the Soviet times by us. The management model, which is uh, confessed by the Ukrainian business, not because it's better, but just because there were more people there uh, who uh, you know, 
um, who came from the international business, uh, uh, they took up another cultural model, which is called the Western uh, management uh, model, where uh, people are uh, the value, not the resource, so where uh, your skills, uh, rather than the proximity to uh, to your patron, uh, determines your success, where there is a culture of interaction and trust, uh, rather than status and or hierarchy, that make a difference. So we have two cultures, and one of them prevails at the civil service. Of course, there are other examples that are great, but this Soviet culture still prevails. And there is another culture that we confess more or less with us. And there is, a, 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 you know, a dream that these two cultures can, can exist in parallel for a long time. I don't believe in this. One is going to eat up another one. So I would, I, I would prefer that the, um, the second one would eat up the first one. Because we see what hap what's happening in, in, in a lot of countries, not just in Russia, right? in a lot of post-Soviet countries. You can't have a, an independent business unless, at the civil service, you have the Soviet culture. And from my perspective, uh, why did I go to these competitions and brought this uh, story in? Because it's a unique opportunity to get into the power and start aggressively unroll the new culture that we believe in within the civil service. Because you can uh, draft a lot of manuals and redraft job descriptions a thousand times, but it's the people who change the culture. And if you want to change the culture, you, it takes a lot of new people who confess this new culture. And for those people who will uh, introduce new doctrines and senses, it takes a lot of new HRs who are going to uh, uh, translate it into the groups of people, into the teams. And, th and this is actually our job. So the civil service agency job is to build the HR function at the Ukrainian civil service. And there should be more of it there. So the culture, transformations, HR, new senses, I hope that that all is going to be a lot here at this event. Good luck, everyone, with this uh, difficult uh, but um, interesting experience. Uh, thank you, Alexander. Colleagues, after such uh, an inspiring uh, welcome speech, you understand that we have a lot of work to do. and. Uh, and the key question is, what does it take? Uh, what do we do? Are we, we're going to do this as well. But it will, it, it will be easier for us because um, we have two panels of experts. Uh, we're going to structure uh, uh, our first uh, expert uh, discussion, then the second expert discussion, and then we'll, we'll work in some small groups uh, uh, at round tables on the recommendations uh, on the concept of the civil service. Y all of you have um, have pages, have sheets uh, uh, of uh, paper. We will need the, them for two reasons. Uh, first, you will see there a link to uh, the folder with the uh, materials, uh, including the group uh, work materials, uh, which will gradually be updated. Secondly, we are going to collect questions at each panel discussion, and, our, and my colleagues are going to help hand over the questions to the moderator. And this is how we are going to ask these questions to our experts. Our first discussion is about um, the results of the studies uh, or the research of the, the, the culture of the, of the civil service. And it's great here that um, we and both the power and the civil society, the, uh, the National Agency for Civil Service, already have something to share. We are not starting from scratch. And today, I would like to introduce our panelists to you. On my right-hand side is Olga Balakireva, Balakireva uh, candidate of sociology sciences, um, head of uh, monitoring surveys department of the socio-economic transformations of the Institute of uh, uh, Economics and um, uh, Prognosis of the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine, uh, Natalia Alushina. 
uh, um, candidate of psychology, uh, head of the general department of HR at uh, CSA. Alexander Starodupsu, you know him. Dmitry Yerovy, candidate of political sciences, uh, program manager of the Kiev School of Economics and head of the public finance management program. And Le Olesya Ogrisko, project manager of uh, the uh, Office of uh, Reforms of the Cabinet of Ministers of U uh, Ukraine. My first question is to everyone, is addressed to everyone, but um, I'm going to ask it to Ms. Natalia. In 2016, uh, the uh, state uh, strategy of development of uh, government um, 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 uh, uh, management started there, but the issue of culture actually emerged later. The um, uh, the reform of the civil service uh, um, uh, um, actually was made uh, uh, of two questions. So let's uh, reduce the civil service. Let's add salaries or reduce salaries. That's it. But why do we need culture in the civil service at all? What is going to uh, what impact is it going to, ha to, to, to have? Uh, so what work have you already conducted at the Civil Service Agency? Thank you, Mr. Colleagues, it is true that uh, we have conducted a, a huge work, and we started out from um, uh, uh, the time uh, when uh, the, um, uh, the uh, strategy was adopted. Uh, and. Uh, it was all about the formation of the organization culture of the civil service, which is based on the values of achieving results, responsibilities, innovation, openness, and communication. According to this message, um, the action plan was also devised. Um, we followed this action plan and executed all the uh, milestones. And uh, uh, most of you have been involved in this in this activity. Uh, what were these points? Uh, first, well. Uh, were the main uh, uh, activities to, to uh, draft the concept uh, of uh, the civil service culture, uh, surveying uh, civil servants on organizational culture and uh, training of HR uh, departments uh, uh, on the uh, contemporary HR tools. Uh, and it's worth mentioning here how it all started. Uh, um, we. Uh, convened in a, a small group of people, the Office of Reforms of the Cabinet of the Ministers of Ukraine and the General Department uh, for HR Management uh, of CSA, and, and, and decided what to do. Uh, we did a brainstorm. We brainstormed our ideas on how we're going to move. Uh, and suddenly, our partners started joining us. Um, I have to mention here the people who immediately were willing to cooperate and uh, admitted that uh, that is the transformation that has to take place. That is the key component that has to uh, drive the system of uh, civil service. Uh, uh, those were OSCE and SIDS. We are very grateful to these partners. Then we were joined by uh, other monsters, such as PGE, uh, the Association of uh, Professional Government, uh, uh, who also uh, uh, took part in the Stanford um, survey that is going to be introduced today by Dmitry Yarovy. Uh, also, the Kiev School of Economics uh, is uh, our other partner that we cooperate with. This is our. Um, uh, this is not the first project. Um, uh, uh, just like the Despro project, they all. Uh, 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 enabled us uh, uh, to um, uh, put uh, our platform on the, the culture of civil service. Um, uh, so all you, all of you are engaged in uh, our community and our project. I have to mention the National Academy of uh, um, uh, of uh, um, uh, government management, where uh, the scholars also joined uh, uh, this uh, uh, process, uh, uh, the um, ethical uh, conduct um, uh, of civil servants. So this is uh, our um, joint uh, work. We have strong HRs, um, and um, we've invited you um, on purpose. Uh, I have to mention Andrei Lipinson, Lipinson, who was also at the outset of this work. Uh, uh, there are no accidental people here, uh, and it's important that there are people here who realize and know what is organizational culture and why we need it. Um, I'm not going to make a long story. I want to. Um, we have another question. What did we start from? We started from the survey, from the 
uh, polling. Uh, do we have bullying at the civil service? You will be surprised. Uh, 1,042 people took part in our opinion poll in one week. Uh, so it was a one-week opinion poll. And we f discovered that um, out of uh, 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 these people, uh, there are different jurisdictions and different categories of civil servants. They are uh, aware of bullying, and they had uh, encountered bullying in the civil service. Uh, this uh, uh, um, poll um, is uh, made uh, uh, public. You have the QR codes on your tables. You can find these materials, and uh, basically you can read all these presentations um, uh, and the results of the survey. We also decided that this component should uh, be reflected in the concept of culture of the civil service. Um, we have uh, developed this intolerance to bullying of civil servants. Um, and based on that, we uh, held a round table that respect and dignity uh, at the civil service, whether the civil servants are protected. That was for categories A, for management of the, the central executive uh, uh, bodies and the, uh, the state secretaries to stand for the interests and, and fight against uh, uh, this uh, bad phenomenon. We also developed a training program for HR uh, divisions of the culture, on the culture of civil service. Jointly with the Reform Office and OSCE and uh, the an OSCE project, we visited four cities. We convened 96 HR uh, people. Um, we uh, traveled across the regions, and as a result, uh, it was very important for us to get from them their ideas and their vision uh, of the development of the Institute of the Civil Service, uh, the mission and the values that they share, and what really brings us together. We also analyzed the international experience on the in organizational culture at the um, uh, uh, government uh, uh, bodies. Uh, it's important for us that the National Academy of Sciences also joined our uh, uh, opinion poll, and it was proposed uh, 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 jointly with our colleagues uh, um, uh, to develop and complement uh, uh, jointly with the six colleagues the Stanford um, uh, a poll. In uh, September, we um, conducted the survey, and uh, um, Olga Balakrava, I'm not taking away your bread. Uh, your piece of bread, right? Um, so you will be introducing the results of that uh, survey that uh, lasted two and a half weeks, uh, and uh, 18,000 people were involved, uh, and they really demonstrated so much pain, and then and, and really told the story where there were some open questions. They shared these uh, uh, these um, insights, and this is a another R and D, uh, you know, possibility to find these bottlenecks. And, and reflect them in the uh, concept of the civil service culture. Also, I'd like to mention that in 2018, uh, at the online uh, Prometheus uh, uh, courses, we developed an uh, HR course at the civil service. And they, they have a separate module which is devoted to the culture of civil service, the organizational culture. And we uh, paid a lot of attention there uh, to the development of uh, the HR strategy. What is HR branding? What is the image of the civil service? All the components thereof. And we started moving, uh, started moving that uh, cultural element, all these components across all the directions, such as uh, uh, training, uh, polling, analytics, communication, uh, um, events. And what to do next? What are we going to do next? Uh, what is our mission? Uh, why are we uh, here today and uh, what we have to continue? First of all, we have to promote the modern tools of uh, human resources management of the civil service. We have to uh, host, uh, 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 offer sy uh, systemic uh, training for uh, HR uh, people on the modern tools of the civil service. Uh, uh, HRM tools. Uh, we have to disseminate the best practices of HRM. You know that uh, we have the second all Ukrainian uh, competition contest, uh, uh, at the, and on 19th of um, uh, December at the uh, Council of HRM, the winners of that contest will be uh, um, um, nominated um, on, on the talents. That's enough. Okay. Uh, also, we are trying to promote. Uh, the open dialogue with uh, the civil servants on uh, identifying uh, the bullying uh, incidents at the civil service. We uh, conduct annual uh, surveys on the organizational culture. We have conducted two such surveys at the central level and the regional level. Um, 
uh, but there should be a monitoring uh, how the culture is changing so that people could uh, respond to uh, the uh, questions and be encouraged to answer the questions. Uh, as soon as they see that some changes take place, they will be more motivated to participate in such uh, opinion polls. Also, we have to uh, improve the best uh, HRM practices on the transformation of the organizational culture. We have to continue the open dialogue with uh, the civil servants and consequently to approximate the culture standards um, uh, uh, to the Ukrainian ones in terms of transparency, openness and integrity. Um, also, I have to mention that uh, we have to promote the rules of ethical conduct at the civil service. What do we want to achieve? Um, not to take much of your time, uh, we have to clarify, uh, the, identify the problems, uh, uh, the cultural problems of the civil service and uh, uh, devise the action plan to resolve them. Uh, we have convened here because the part two will, is the workshop that will be devoted to this, uh, uh, uniting the civil servants with uh, the common values and mission because the culture unites, the values unite. Uh, we have to reinforce such competencies as uh, human resources management, uh, holding dialogues, uh, client orientedness, uh, teamwork and interaction. Uh, we also need to develop and to uh, uh, raise the, uh, the, 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 the awareness and uh, the interest uh, uh, and engagement of civil servants, the motivation of civil servants. So we have to build the highly efficient teams of civil servants uh, um, with a high level of empathy and organizational culture. The, is the issues of prestige uh, of the civil service. What does it take for the civil service to be prestigious? We can't just advertise it because we are civil servants, servants and we are carriers of this culture, the national ideal. Like the, Brit the Brits say, the U Britain is where I am. So we are interested in the uh, civil service, and we are civil servants. So it's the, the prestige of the civil service that uh, depends on each civil servant. So we have to bring back the trust of citizens to um, the civil service and the civil servants. I would like to say that in any government body, there is culture. As you enter any government building, you feel that there is some culture in here. It's impossible that there is no culture. There should be some kind of culture. Um, also, it's important for us to, to understand that the world is changing. Everything is uh, changing. The senses are changing. You know, the, the meanings are changing. And, and uh, it's just the values that are not changing the, and we all share and that unite us. It's very important to reach out to the HRM um, uh, units. If uh, managers don't help, uh, it's that HRM division will not be able to solve problems. They won't be able to influence. They won't be able to move this uh, iceberg because uh, um, it's just the synergy effect between the management that the top managers uh, and, and, and HRM divisions th that uh, make this uh, work and the common motivation to achieve that goal. So what do we have to do? Um, we have to consider today the project, uh, uh, the uh, draft uh, concept of uh, the culture. We have a skeleton already. And um, the, uh, identify the benchmarks that we will work uh, with at our round tables, um, with our um, uh, working groups at the workshop. Um, uh, I'm going to moderate part two, and we'll be talking more about our next steps. Uh, thank you very much, all. Thank you, Ms. Natalia. Thank you. That was a big uh, welcome speech. Um, to the discussion, uh, Alexander Starodubtsev today uh, mentioned that one of the biggest uh, Ukraine success stories is uh, Prozoro initiative. It's not a state initiative. It's not a public initiative. It's a public slash government synergy initiative. It's interesting that very recently, We had another interesting initiative, not of the public and the government only, but also uh, by the academia in terms of researching the culture at the civil service. One of the institutions uh, is uh, 
Stanford, the Kiev School of Economics, um, on the initiative of the Association of uh, Professional uh, uh, Government and uh, in uh, a partnership with the Secretariat of the Cabinet of the Ministers of Ukraine and later with uh, the CSA. In 2018, the l most large scale opinion poll uh, was conducted uh, of uh, civil servants. And um, this is a small bridge to Dmitro. We all have a feeling that uh, our car of, uh, of, of, of of public administration is uh, malfunctioning. Maybe the we have a flat tires. Maybe it's the brakes or the accelerator that uh, is not working. So we have to go to the um, station and do the diagnostics. And so thanks to this uh, synergy and thanks to this. Uh, 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 survey, this opinion poll, we have something to share with uh, in terms of diagnostics. So my question to you is this, from the organizational uh, culture of the civil service perspective, what do we have to fight against and what do we have to build? Thank you. I think first and foremost we have to fight against prejudice and bias uh, of the civil servants uh, and the new people who are uh, joining the civil service, uh, you know, where they we don't think that they have something to tell us, you know, with people, with the experienced people, uh, you know, you're not doing anything, so there's a bias. That's the main thing that we have to fight against. We have to eliminate this bias, we have to communicate uh, and hear each other. We have to build a system where one culture will prevail over another one. The, the, the new one, most civilized one, like Alexandra said, and that it has to uh, to swallow the another one, uh, but to make sure that the good, reasonable people do not suffer that share another culture. The presentation that we're talking about today is not in the handouts uh, uh, because we still don't have its final version. It will be finished within about a month. This, um, but uh, some, uh, I try to introduce uh, to you some of the most interesting insights for the next five minutes. This survey was uh, pretty uh, big. Almost all the ministries, uh, except for the Ministry of Defense and Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs uh, and Ministry of Economy and Ministry of Interior, all other ministries were involved in the survey. Um, we had 4,500 uh, uh, respondents, uh, uh, more than 2,000 uh, uh, people responded, so the, that's what, that was a project of the Stanford, Stanford University and uh, the questions based on that we post based uh, on some survey interviews um, as uh, part uh, of the first uh, stage. We had 21 interviews with civil servants, with uh, politicians, and that project was supported by uh, Konrad Adenauer uh, Foundation at the very first stage. And we're very grateful to this uh, foundation. And I would like to tell you about communication today. So, so, uh, does the management account for your proposals during decision-making process? Half of the respondents answered they do frequently or they do always. About a quarter said that they uh, take into account uh, these proposals sometimes. So the non-optimistic uh, uh, result is that one out of ten civil servants uh, say they don't have any experience of uh, uh, providing expert proposals. You m might. Uh, make different assumptions about them, about this. Maybe these are the people who have some technical positions, or maybe these are the people that are more motivated to uh, make some uh, expert positions, but because uh, about 80% of, of, of these people are happy with their career, the civil service. So these are the people, I guess, that are not the future of our civil service in the current version of it, like, like Alexander was uh, saying. So there's another question. 
At your ministry, can the top management generate the high level of motivation? It's interesting that the percentage uh, uh, about uh, motivation and how the civil servants are informed are aware uh, of this. Now, motivation can be different, you know, can motivate in different ways. Uh, right, yeah. You can interpret it as you wish, but, uh, but we didn't make a clarification uh, here in this, uh, in this poll. Uh, so they almost, these answers al almost correlate. That they, the answers almost correlate to the question whether you get enough information from, from the management and whether the management generates motivation uh, among the employees. So in other interviews, we also uh, discovered that if uh, uh, the people knew better what was happening at their ministry, they would know why they are doing this job, which again underlines the need for communication between the top management and the employees rather than just giving some instructions. The answer to the question, uh, are you aware of the goals and tasks uh, uh, of the reform of uh, uh, public administration? As you see, 50% of the people know the strategy. Uh, a lot of few people said that they, uh, uh, very few people said that uh, they don't know anything about it. And also the process of uh, the uh, reform of public administration, uh, about 50% of civil servants are looking at this positively. We have a clear dependence of the assessment, uh, of the opinion on the public administration reform, uh, on the awareness. So the more, uh, the, among the people who say that they are aware of the public administration reform, the percentage of people that support it is higher than uh, those who are not aware of this reform. Uh, so to explain to you why we do this, uh, this actually generates some support uh, and motivation to action. Communication and uh, uh, detecting uh, violations. So the blue uh, uh, pillar is that where, whether you are able to approach uh, uh, to your managers with some problems. And the orange pillar is where you are able to report about some infringements and violations. So, so the results here are less optimistic. As you see here, the majority of people are uh, uh, either hesitating that they can report uh, on some uh, infringements or violations of the law. Or, so the issue of whistleblowers here at the civil service is also uh, a pressing issue and it requires a systemic solution because uh, uh, a lot of respondents believe that they cannot report such cases. Um, to summarize, the question, it's a big question to the respondents, how easy it is, is it for you to interact with other categories of civil servants? And on this graph you see in the blue pillar it's easy, then the orange is uh, not easy, then the gray one is um, uh, difficult, and the yellow is don't have any experience whatsoever. Uh, so about 90% of respondents uh, argue that it's very easy for them. And then you see civil servants of other um, divisions of the, the ministries, the, then you have civil servants at other ministries. And unfortunately, the yellow pillar is the interaction with reform experts so so they can uh, easily communicate uh, with uh, their colleagues uh, from the department they have a hard time actually communicating with the reform experts which again emphasizes the need for the need for a better integration a better communication uh, explaining what these people are doing here and why they came here and uh, how this reform is implemented. The full report will be finished within uh, a month, a month and a half. It will be public. It will be presented. We will be discussing it. And both the report and the conclusions, so far, it is just a teaser on 
what we have at the civil service. You, we can't say that we have some horrible status of the organizational uh, culture. Quite on the contrary, when we uh, launched the survey, we were more pessimistic. Uh, we were really impressed in a lot of things, but we do have some bottlenecks that we have to pay attention to and systemically solve them. Thank you, Dmitro. Alexandra had uh, a few comments, I guess. Yeah, right. Just a few words. Um, unfortunately, I really have to uh, go. Uh, I have a new hobby. I am uh, the member of the Higher Core Commission, and I really have to uh, be part of that sitting. So, um, just a few words, just to uh, be clear. What really irritates me at the civil service is the lack of content. I, I, I really drafted a small matrix, uh, and I put it in the, the recent uh, update on Facebook. For instance, you have to do this, you don't have to do this. Is it provided by the law? It's not provided by the law. And we have terrible problems in the area of provided and shouldn't do, but we still do it because it's provided by some regulatory acts, because it has been like this for years. And nobody is asking a question, how can we change this? What can I do? Well, the, well, this is the framework of the Ministry of Justice. Okay, okay, let's do it. Um, so, we there are a lot of things that we've inherited from the Soviet Union. We really have to get rid of them. The same story goes whether you should do this, but it's not provided by the law. Oh, but this is Article 19 of the Constitution. We have to dream. We have to dream and understand where we should be heading. But, but it's... It's not written in the job description that we have to dream. Uh, and we have some catharsis, right? Uh, it's good if it's pr both provided and needed. And we do what we have to do, right? So, so the advantage of the f form of the content. And sometimes the, the, the leaders who can focus your ideas and, uh, you know, uh, this is something I lack at the civil service in Ukraine. And uh, honestly speaking, I uh, have a problem with the leaders. I don't have any problem with uh, the uh, uh, mid-class, um, uh, mid-range uh, professionals. But the leader, we don't have, we lack leadership. I don't see leadership at the civil service. There's an understanding that, the, you know, uh, there's a system out there. Someone has given me an instruction from the cabinet of ministers. These are, these are some complex issues. It's difficult to respond to them. But these are the issues of culture. These are the issues of the doctrine, what we believe in. How do we behave? Where we're we moving? That's the first thing. Sorry for the, for, a long, for the long uh, uh, insight. Uh, the, the second point. I have a question to you. What will be the output of today? So what will be the result of this session? I do hope that we'll come up with some concrete things. Uh, I believe that the culture can change through the behavioral changes and through some educational training programs. I, will be, I would be very grateful to the list of life hacks, what we start to do, what we stop to do, what we post on our walls to motivate people, how we uh, open the door to offices, how often do we um, uh, hold uh, uh, the Friday meetings, like every Friday evening we we, we, we actually, I, 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 I stole it from Google, uh, you know, the Friday meetings. So um, these, these are the things that we super need. And this is a list of life hacks. But we also need a list of some training programs, initiatives. I'm not a methodologist. I hope there are methodologists uh, among you, the much better professionals, professionals than me. There must be some logic behind this. What we start to talk with people about and how we direct people. Gradually, I do believe that a person starts working efficiently as long as he sees a sense behind this. And, and first, for that, you have to understand where, we, where you're going and how um, that actually overlaps with the goals of the organization. How you can realize your own goals by working at this organization. I don't really believe that the person is going to work uh, in a sincere and persistent way for the whole life if it's just provided by the Constitution and the job description. You are going to work persistently as long as you understand why you need this. And it takes to talk with the people a lot, to think, to give it a thought to this. How do we drag them into this discussion? How do we build this discussion? Where to direct it? There should be a concrete list of activities. And I hope that there should be a draft. Great. 
Cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't uh, uh, well prepared uh, to this conference. Uh, so, I hope that this is something that we will have in hands as an output of this event. Thank you and good luck. Uh, thank you, Alexander, for this uh, message. Our vehicle is moving forward. It has been uh, diagnosed at uh, 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 the Kiev uh, uh, automobile station, and it wants to move uh, to the sea, to the coast, to Odessa. You know the status of Ukrainian roads. And these 500 plus kilometers between Kiev and Odessa, you understand that we'll have another flat tire, uh, that uh, the gearbox is not working properly. And in Odessa, we will be met by other drivers who have their needs, their problems, and the Kiev station may not be uh, showing you the full picture. We have today a researcher, Olga Balakireva, who jointly with uh, the team helped uh, implement an interesting idea. The uh, all national research at the, the cabinet of ministers uh, level, uh, the central uh, government uh, uh, level is great. But what's happening on the spot? What's happening locally in the regional uh, governments. What is the organizational culture there? What are the challenges there? Ms. Olga, please share with us what you've managed to uh, research uh, and whether the results really match with uh, the national level research. First of all, I would like to thank all the organizations for this uh, uh, to conduct this research. I think it's a unique research, a uh, unique study. Uh, it's the first study uh, that was conducted at the regional level of such a scale. So we have covered all regions of Ukraine. We have the entire of Ukraine, and all the regions have been covered. And the target group are uh, the uh, uh, civil servants categories uh, uh, B and C. That was an online study uh, based on the monkey survey platform. The civil servants were invited by letter signed by the head of uh, CSA. There was some self-selection, but uh, the number of people, more than 18,000 respondents who uh, uh, were involved in the study, is quite impressive. Not all of them made to the end. We have now 14,700 uh, uh, people in the database, and uh, uh, we have made such a an analysis. There's another important point. I'd like to deliver the message to you that you can trust uh, this uh, uh, study. It has some representation level. If we had a more detailed statistics, uh, we could uh, uh, verify uh, uh, whether the respondents match with the general structure of the regional level civil servants. Unfortunately, uh, uh, the statistics is available only at the regional level, so this weighting or weighing uh, ratio was uh, uh, taken into account. There was there is no statistics on the sex uh, and the age, but more than 14,000 people were involved. It gives us an idea on the structure, on the age structure. You can see here. I understand that the, the screen is very small here, but you can uh, download it. And because we're pressed for time, I am not going to give you a lot of figures, just uh, noting the trends. Uh, please uh, uh, look at the uh, sex dis distribution. 23% of men and 77% of women took part in the study. Maybe this doesn't reflect the general structure. Unfortunately, we don't have statistics on that. This is one of the challenges, actually, to to actually bring back that kind, the kind of statistics. But uh, we can uh, conduct some analysis anyway. We do have a high level of education among the regional level civil servants. We have 95% of uh, uh, people who have higher than bachelors and 5% uh, of bachelors. And, uh, uh, and the categories B and C, category B, which took part in the study, are 36%, and category C are 64%. The average uh, uh, work uh, um, record are 13 years, and the uh, average uh, uh, the average uh, 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 time uh, spent at work uh, uh, generally are six years. Because the, the study was finished just a month ago, I am not going to introduce to you the results that um, 
uh, have uh, been processed. Just these are just the main emphases the, of the data that we obtained. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, uh, to uh, uh, really point to the motivation and satisfaction with the work. We've asked a question: Why did people come to work at the civil service? And uh, you see that uh, primarily this is because of the professional development, uh, stable salaries, the willingness to work for the government, the willingness to work for the society. By the way, such a split. Uh, of civil servants. Civil servants are more government-oriented rather than society-oriented. And I'm going to have a question to you during the discussion. Should it be the case? Is this okay? Uh, or it should be otherwise? Uh, the fact that the, the civil servant skills uh, 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 are properly utilized uh, have been mentioned by more than 80 percent, but 19 percent disagreed with that, and that's also another challenge. And that's also a challenge uh, for us. As you see, uh, uh, three fourths uh, of the people uh, would still choose the civil service if other conditions in the private sector were proposed to them at uh, the same salary and at the s in the same conditions, working conditions. And I think it's a pretty good uh, indicator. Uh, we also see a, a high level of satisfaction with the, the work and professional uh, selection, but the low level of satisfaction with the salary. I don't think it's a surprise for the attendees. Um, we see this from the statistics. Um, uh, with regards to uh, the success recognition, uh, the fact that people are happy with their success, whether successes are recognized at workplace. So it's 50-50. Uh, I didn't provide a detailed uh, distribution because it's difficult to really perceive that. Uh, I would like to focus on some uh, emphases. Another important point, whether each of the factors is important uh, for your current job post. That is related to motivation, with to the willingness to work, to the formation of some values, and I would like to uh, point out here to the red color. The personal connections are important for uh, 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 more than one uh, 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 fifth of the respondents, and those people who uh, were not willing to say yes, we're not willing to say to give a positive answer. So about one third of the respondents believe that personal connections are very important. Another impressive result is the loyalty to the management. 10% said it's very important. Another 30% said most likely it is important. 16% uh, uh, were not willing to, uh, to, to answer. And I, from my perspective, it is the tradition of non-democratic relations. Uh, uh, the manage, manager orientation just to preserve your job, uh, uh, some loyal attitudes. Uh, this is the element that serves attention. Uh, the question about values. Uh, it has already been mentioned today, but it's easy to change uh, you know, a jacket uh, to a hoodie, but it's more difficult to change values. Uh, and the issue of values and how they are formed today and, and what stands behind every value is a separate discussion. I'm not going to get into, spend much time on it. Uh, we'll be talking about it at uh, the uh, this concept discussion. Uh, but the society, when they uh, are, are, are saying what they expect of the civil servants, they put integrity in the first place. Yes, integrity was also named as a value, 69% named integrity. But uh, when we look at the components of integrity, uh, the unbiased attitude to people is only 10 percent, impartial attitude. Openness and transparency, only 15 percent. Uh, equality and non-discrimination, only 5 percent. So this question about the values and the contents of each value, again, serves uh, attention. Uh, we had a question on how much the values that we have uh, mentioned, how much the power protects your values. Only 28% said that the power protects your values. It's difficult to uh, give some interpretation of what that, that actually means. Uh, but from my perspective, today the civil servants that named their values believe that they are not protected, so they are not supported by another power. Uh, and that's, again, a difficult uh, question. This w 
will need time and of course it's the role of professional training and education that is very high. Uh, some separate uh, aspects of uh, the uh, work practices. Duplication of functions. Uh, look at this. The fact that functions are duplicated with another government body, 24% of respondents. Within the same government agency, 20.5%. Within the same unit, 15% said that there is duplication. These are important uh, indicators uh, to improve the organizational culture. The question which has also been mentioned today about the formal norms and rules, whether they support the result, result orientedness. Uh, these are the results. Uh, they are hurdles, actually. They don't help. Uh, almost 10% of people believe that they uh, stand in the way often. Another 43% say that they most likely that they are uh, hurdles. And we have 31% that uh, 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 decided uh, to uh, not to answer. So almost 80% of people believe that uh, formal rules do not help uh, achieve the result. The question about relations with the management. Without any detailed uh, uh, figures, one third of uh, uh, the employees are not happy with various aspects of management practices. Um, whether people are engaged in decision making uh, with the management uh, practices, with the amount of information that is being provided. Uh, the question about motivation. 42% believe that the management does not motivate them. And that was a reasonable. <clears throat> reasonable question. What stands behind motivation? Maybe we should add here some quality research. But that means either there is no support or there is no example or uh, uh, there's a contradiction to the values. So it's a cumulative indicator, but 42% of people believe that the management does not motivate them well enough. 15% disagree that the management uh, respects them. Uh, and that's an important indicator, which also uh, touches upon the values and the system of culture, the democratic system of culture. 19% disagree that they can freely, freely express their thoughts and opinions uh, to the manager, to the immediate uh, supervisor. Another question was, uh, which was added by the SIDS uh, initiative, if you have ever uh, received any unethical instructions uh, or uh, illegal instructions, 15% said yes. 10% said that it uh, happens to several uh, times a year uh, uh, or, uh, on a monthly basis or on a weekly basis. But it's interesting that men uh, gave uh, such an answer twice as uh, 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 often than women. And the longer you work at the civil service, the more often did the civil servants say that they had such instructions from the management. So there are some reservations to give an ethical uh, um, instructions to the young uh, professionals. Um, the issue of initiative and innovations. Uh, I understand that it's, we are really pressed for time, but 19% uh, did not show any initiative and 23% of people say, believe that their initiative is not encouraged. So there is a combination here where people, that people are prepared for the, in, to take an, an initiative, but it's a matter of a motivation. 46% uh, disagreed that uh, uh, that at this government body, innovation is encouraged. And it's, it's a very interesting answer on how civil servants view themselves and others uh, as uh, innovators and cons conservators. 60 plus percent said that the uh, majority of civil servants are uh, conservators, and uh, uh, but 60 percent uh, 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 of people said that they are innovators. So it's a by. Uh, by vo volunteer uh, opinion. Uh, now, uh, the research about bullying, there were a series of questions about discrimination. I have to say that I was impressed by these uh, results because I have been involved in uh, 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 bullying for uh, a long time. And uh, the fact that the, the civil servants uh, argued that they had encountered discrimination uh, uh, by the number of years, about 25% uh, by age, 24% uh, by family or um, a property status, 14%. By the way, I don't understand what that actually means. Uh, maybe uh, you have a better understanding of the question. By sex, 12.5%. Uh, you see that there are other dimensions of discrimination, such as religion and sexual orientation, disability, which is very clear by our traditions. 
So according to this data, this issue serves a separate discussion and some additional measures to be taken. In terms of protectiveness, protection, unfortunately, it, we have problems with that. Um, I have uh, made two graphs. It's uh, uh, very high and not high, and then the uh, red and the blue. So people who believe that they are protected or the low level of protection. You see here that about it's about 50-50 uh, distribution, which is another important aspect in terms of uh, 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 protection. Another a slide from the study, we're going to talk about it at the uh, Council uh, on the 19th of December, but the question is uh, whether the professional competencies of civil servants are formed. The least formed competen competencies are the ability to efficiently uh, uh, manage human resources. The least uh, uh, formed competencies is the ability to use uh, IT in professional activities, making efficient decisions, the ability to study and learn new experiences. So these are the most important competencies that are formed at less than 5% of people. Um, so based on this, it's really worthwhile talking about the training needs, needs for training. To make a summary, uh, the key emphasis that I have seen from the study in a very short time as we uh, over, made an overview. Duplication of work functions, formal rules become hurdles for efficient work, insufficient level of motivation uh, from the managers, the loyalty to the management and personal connections remain to be the drivers of successful career, the initiative is not encouraged, the manifestation of discrimination takes place and the level of protection, protection is not sufficient. Um, thank you for your attention. I think we will carry on this discussion as we work at the round tables. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Olga. Colleagues, uh, we carry on our journey. You remember that our civil service uh, uh, vehicle went to the station in Kiev, then it went to Odessa, went to another uh, maintenance uh, station, and uh, not just in Odessa, almost all the regions, uh, 25 Ukrainian regions have been covered. And uh, I imagine that this uh, uh, maintenance station uh, are our HR divisions, our HR divisions are the civil service. The maintenance uh, foreman, maintenance people that can mend something, like because the vehicle cannot uh, uh, run all the time, it can break down, you need diagnostics, annual diagnostics, annual tests, uh, um, annual maintenance. And at some stage, we realized that uh, the destiny of our vehicle, the destiny of the civil service is decided at the human resources management units. Thanks to their consolidated work, thanks to their professionalism, our vehicle will survive and will start operating better and will be driving better and will bring us to the destination, to the point of destination of reforms, uh, democracy, and uh, uh, the wealthy society. I know that Lesya Ogriska, jointly with the team of the Office of Reforms and the, the Civil Service Agency and uh, the partners, conducted uh, meetings, uh, workshops, uh, strategic sessions uh, in the regions for the HR services, uh, uh, HR units. Uh, did, what did you manage to share at this meeting? Sir? Did you manage to share some results uh, of uh, the studies that uh, were introduced by our colleagues and how do you plan to work in the future? Thank you. Good morning, dear colleagues. First of all, as a co-organizer co of this event, I'd like to thank you for your interest uh, to the culture of interest, uh, um, to the culture of uh, civil service uh, as part of the re public administration reform, which is uh, new and uh, fresh. and. Um, because the topic of civil service culture is so new, everything we have been doing for the last year, a year and a half, everything we've done with our colleagues really bears an innovation scale. Let me reiterate here and say that because the, pre the, the previous speaker said that we have fixed for the first time such a word combination as the culture of civil service in a 
government documents. For the first time ever, we raised the issue of culture of the civil service. For the first time ever, we have held such a large-scale study, uh, the survey, the poll of the civil servants uh, in Ukraine. Almost 20,000 civil servants in Ukraine responded to our uh, questions and shared their pains and uh, sorrows. So for the first time, we have held uh, a large-scale uh, uh, training uh, for HRM uh, divisions. Uh, we have uh, 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 made a big uh, uh, all-Ukrainian journey with OSCE and uh, Civil Service Agency. We went uh, to north, south, uh, west, and east. Uh, uh, and uh, I really enjoyed this format of work. Uh, is uh, the two-way traffic street. On the, way on the one hand, we shared our ideas about the culture of civil service. And we have to point out that uh, for a lot of people, that was uh, the first time when they encountered this topic. So we actually had to submerge them into the topic of organizational culture and explain to them what it's all about. On the other hand, they, during our strategic sessions, shared uh, a great number of their emotions, their perceptions, uh, how they feel at the civil uh, service, uh, why they come to work at every day, what is their mission uh, to work for the government, to work for the society. Of course, uh, one can talk a, a, a lot, uh, but um, we are pressed for time today, and I'm going to introduce you to just the regional peculiarities and what actually unites everyone. Uh, in all Ukrainian uh, parts, uh, when we spoke uh, of values, everyone uh, named some clear notions that you can hear across Ukraine, both integ uh, integrity, professionalism, patriotism, uh, teamwork, and so on. But from what I was really impressed uh, uh, is that uh, as opposed to communicating with uh, HRs in the region uh, that uh, mentioned uh, oftentimes the issues of uh, protecting human rights, uh, uh, or uh, uh, protection of some uh, major values and dignity. At the regional uh, polls that uh, Ms. Olga has introduced us to, this uh, question and this value is only number five. As for me, this, this is a discouraging factor because Ukraine as a country that has um, uh, survived uh, the dignity, the revolution of dignity, where people went out, uh, took to the streets to protect uh, human rights and basic rights. Civil servants uh, do not really share these values as much. Uh, the values that called the people to the Maidan. With regards to some correlation, With regards to the regional dimension, it's worth saying that uh, at the event, uh, uh, the innovation uh, values were most frequently uh, mentioned as a priority of the development of the civil service. That is the only part of Ukraine where they stated the prestige of the civil service as a strong point. In other parts of Ukraine, uh, prestige was named as uh, a bottleneck, uh, something that is very uh, weak. In the east, uh, in eastern Ukraine, it's very logical that we spoke a lot about uh, the war. Uh, in our strategic sessions uh, among uh, the HR people, there were also internally displaced people and the people who suffered from the Russia-Ukraine war in the east. And that is the topic that is uh, very sensitive, especially in eastern Ukraine. With regards to southern Ukraine, uh, people were more focused on training. Uh, one could see this willingness to develop the uh, culture of self-development, uh, uh, exchanging experiences and uh, the external world. And it is the region where most frequently we spoke about the willingness to cooperate with international partners. Uh, somehow they described the investments in the civil service, uh, which is our South Ukrainian willingness, especially in Odessa. They always like commerce, as you know, right? So in terms of the mission, um, when we spoke in different parts of Ukraine, the mission and the goal of the civil service uh, to missions were named. The creation of uh, the safe and democratic environment for the society and the second one was the 
satisfaction of the citizens' needs. And here we see a clear correlation. The lower the, the, lower the level of the uh, government institution or the jurisdiction, the closer are they to the people. The more emphasis was made to satisfy people's daily needs, uh, uh, the more did we talk about uh, uh, satisfying people with some administrative services. So that is all very interesting to look at the Ukrainian context and uh, uh, all, this, all these studies will in one way or another be part of the concept of civil service. But it's always interesting to uh, put Ukraine into the international perspective and to compare it um, how uh, other countries' civil uh, uh, services, uh, public administrations uh, actually live. And we spoke with the colleagues today. We also held an international comparative analysis of uh, public administrations abroad. We used 13 countries, mostly EU countries, plus the US, Canada, Singapore, and Australia, and, and decided to uh, analyze their outcomes in terms of the missions, visions, values and so on. So what's worth uh, mentioning is that uh, uh, all of these countries, to a certain extent, these issues are prescribed somehow, whether it's the issues of codes or laws on the civil service or other regulatory acts, but everywhere it is prescribed. Uh, often uh, we receive questions, why do we really want to, to, to fix such a, a soft uh, component as values on some paper? Uh, because it's an international trend. It's absolutely logical that we join such initiatives. In terms, uh, in terms of the pains, they're very similar. Everyone is uh, speaking uh, about uh, the reduction of level of corruption at the civil service. Everybody is saying that uh, there are some tools of encouragement to, uh, of citizens' participation in policy making. Everybody is saying. Uh, about uh, administrative services. So, so these are not unique Ukrainian phenomena that we can see at all public administrations. But I would like to point out to two elements which, from my perspective, are most interesting. One's uh, the first thing pe people pay attention to in terms of values and missions of uh, the uh, public administrations of other countries is are the issues of trust, which is very logical because uh, we live uh, in the age of total crisis of trust between all, there's a, a war of all against all. And in some countries, uh, they make an emphasis on the uh, public administration as the island that can uh, regain the, uh, or, or build this trust between the, the government and the civil society or the society in general. In the US, for instance, uh, in their code, uh, they have a very concise statement. The civil service is about social trust. In uh, Latvia, I, I'm going to quote this, um, uh, an official should behave in the way to uh, increase the trust of uh, society to the public administration. In Norway, they write that a civil servant should foster uh, the development and, of trust and prestige of the organization. Uh, and the second element that I'd like to point out to is uh, the issue of openness, transparency, uh, and humanness, or humanity. Uh, uh, so the front uh, men in this uh, topic are uh, the people uh, from North uh, uh, Europe. I have uh, looked at two countries that I really loved. Here is uh, Sweden and Estonia. Uh, in Sweden, they argue that civil servants uh, are the uniting link between uh, the uh, government and civil society. So they argue that civil service is this bridge of communication. In Estonia, they also said it in a very concise way that uh, a public official is a citizen serving the people. So the person is placed in the center and the civil servant is just like a human, uh, like any other human being that serves other humans of this country. So at uh, this uh, human-centric note, I'd like to wish all the civil servants of Ukraine to remember that first and foremost, we are humans, we care about other humans, we care about our society, we care about our state. Thank you for your participation. I'd like to give the floor to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lesia, very much. She has introduced uh, to us uh, all the achievements of our uh, uh, Ukrainian tour. Um, by the way, colleagues, you uh, will uh, be introduced to, to the fragments. Uh, we have selected the missions and values uh, 
that have been selected by our colleagues uh, from the regions, uh, you will see them, and at the workshop you will have such a task, uh, such tasks, you will have to arrange those tasks, and uh, it's very difficult for us to undertake this responsibility. We were trying to do this, but um, we will give you this chance as experts, because we have an expert discussion today of the concept, uh, and um, to summarize um, this, uh, uh, this session, this first panel, um, because uh, today we have uh, 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 Mr. Pijuk from the trade unions, and I'd like to give the floor to him just for two minutes, because the trade unions have always existed. I don't know what will happen in the future, but um, please, two minutes. Yeah, Mr. Yuri, you have the floor. Yuri Pijuk, head of the trade unions of uh, the state uh, agencies of Ukraine. Uh, I am grateful to uh, Natalia for this invitation. Honestly speaking, in a couple of minutes we will uh, have a meeting at the uh, Central Committee of Trade Unions, and uh, uh, I escaped the meeting to actually speak here uh, to understand what's happening. I'm very grateful for the fact that we've started to talk about the civil service culture and to be serious about it in, in a serious environment, to speak about the values, to speak about the things that are very important for us. I have uh, worked for a long time at the civil service and uh, my most recent job was the head of the department of HRM of uh, uh, state agencies and local government um, uh, bodies. And for a long time I was the secretary of uh, 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 the HRM, uh, um, uh, central and uh, local executive body. So I think I know what this discussion is all about. When we talk about the values, we have to uh, speak uh, uh, what Lesia was saying, uh, that a civil servant is just like a human being, like all other citizens, for the sake of which they are working and providing services to. Uh, I'm very hopeful that the 18,000 uh, uh, respondents are not the 18,000 people who have now uh, been reduced and whose jobs have been cut now. I hope that uh, this study is going to correlate or will not correlate with that number of people. I do hope that uh, we have to think that as soon as we introduce uh, the new rules of the play for the people who have been put in these conditions, they did not uh, uh, decide on the rules of the play. They have uh, been through competitions, they have been through selection procedures, they have the regulatory framework. Um, I'll be quick, I'll be quick. We have to think about the people as the value. And when we say that um, there is a new vision and it is the right of the employer to change the structure and to speak of the things that Alexander was saying, I really loved his speech, that we have to uh, contribute a contents. And, and there's some bad things uh, drafted uh, in the job descriptions and they have to be removed and uh, we have to give more sense to the job description for the civil service, uh, servants. But we have also to create the conditions. Uh, people who have guarantees, they have to select whether they will continue to work according to the new rules of the play or they will leave and find a new job. And the new rules will only apply to those who will agree to those rules. What was Dimitro saying about? He was talking about um, unbiased uh, attitudes, uh, about um, impartiality. I think we have to put an exclamation mark to this, uh, to make sure that everybody works with impartiality to the people that gives you the right to be tolerant, gives you the right to be understood, gives you the right to be, to believe that something must be changed. If we don't communicate enough, and we do communicate uh, um, insufficiently, if people don't understand what uh, 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 Ms. Ms. Olga was talking about, by the way, it's a very good study. Um, it has a, a wide spectrum of understanding of the problems that uh, are there at uh, the public administration. And um, when we are saying that part of the people do not understand what should be changed? That doesn't mean the people are bad. You have to, to deliver the message and motivate them, and part of them will be adherents of these uh, changes. 
You can't break the people against the wall. This is not the success of reforms. You, just will, you will just find resentment and resistance where you shouldn't be looking for it. It's about finding the people who will not support you. What happens uh, with the pensioners? Pensioners who gave uh, part of their lives and they have not received pensions for those who retired uh, according to the new law. They should have uh, additional um, additional uh, 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 pensions. Uh, between 2008 and 2016, uh, tens of thousands of people felt this uh, injustice. They, uh, uh, having worked for 20, 30 years at the, at the public administration, they receive uh, um, 100 euros a month. Will such people support the changes? The, 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 there was a table here whether the government protects uh, uh, the rights and values of, uh, of, of civil servants. Yuri Mikolaevich, we'll talk about it later. Uh, 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 please uh, kindly stay for the last session. Yeah, I would like to say that why I took the floor now, because I, I will be compelled to leave, but uh, I have to say it. We are in the same boat. We don't have any resistance. As far as I understand, these are the people who are in charge of uh, HRM, right? So we'll have to find a formula for the people who will come to the civil service to feel comfortable, motivated, and protected. And such people are going to change this uh, state. And I'm grateful to you for your understanding, for the speeches that, um, uh, for the um, deliverables that you will uh, you will come up with uh, today uh, in the document, the life hacks as uh, Alexandra said, that will give the tomorrow's impetus to change the culture of the civil servants, to change the culture of the government bodies. Thank you very much. Uh, colleagues, um, we have uh, uh, all uh, success uh, uh, opportunities uh, thanks to two things uh, that Alexandra uh, mentioned and the speakers. The first is uh, innovations. We are all co-authors and innovators. The concept um, of civil service at the second panel, and um, uh, you know, uh, at, uh, as we work with uh, at the round tables, we kindly ask you to aggressively and uh, persistently propose your ideas. Uh, our second part uh, and our uh, second hope for success is because uh, uh, Ms. Olesia was uh, saying is the two-way street. This reform is not something we are bringing from the top to the bottom, you know, with some concept, some uh, gov government uh, uh, to the HR people. It's a two-way street, but it's a multi-way synergy. So the two words, innovation and synergy, of your efforts as well uh, and of our work, here and in the regions is something that gives us the right and all the chances to have success. Thank you. Thank you, dear panelists of panel one. Uh, we will have a technical break for five minutes and we will resume panel two.